Well, and, and the AFC gives us a couple of new school matchups. Right. The NFC gives us a couple of old school matchups. I talked yesterday about how Eagles Giants reminds me of the 70s. Pat Summerall, Tom Brookshire, green cement games at Veterans Stadium or Giants Stadium. Cowboys 49ers, good God, it's the 90s all over again, Yeah. right? Pull out the Zubaz pants. I saw a guy at the airport yesterday wearing Giants Zubaz pants. Get out the Zubaz. We're going back to 1992 when the Cowboys and the 49ers get together. Too bad Candlestick Park is gone. Maybe they just play the game on the site of Candlestick Park. I don't even know what's there now. So that's the only thing that that is sad about this. It's it's new stadiums for these two games, not the ones we were accustomed to in the old days. But uh, how about this, too? A fact that one of my writers noted today on PFT. Three teams from the NFC East in the divisional round. First yeah. time three teams from the same division in the divisional round since realignment in 2002. And we were ready to disband the NFC East two years ago. We were talking about taking away the home game automatic for winning the division because the Washington football team, as they were known at the time, was the best of four really bad teams. Now there wasn't a single team in the division under 500 because Washington finished 8-8-1, eight, eight, and one, and the other three teams are all in the divisional round. That is impressive. Um, and, and again, to me, I think, it, hey, look, I believe the 49ers are beatable when someone beats them, but I agree with you. Of all the various options out there for the divisional round, because the Eagles weren't an option because they were the one seed. Yeah. But of all the other teams that could have gone to Santa Clara this weekend, the yeah. Cowboys scary. are the most intriguing. Right. Because I think the 49ers would have killed the Vikings. The 49ers would have killed the Buccaneers. The 49ers would have killed the Giants. And the 49ers, as we saw, already have beaten the Seahawks. Yeah. The Cowboys are the one team that I think could give the 49ers – everything they can handle. And uh, I hope they do on Sunday just for the purposes of seeing a good game. But right. I sure don't want it to come down to Brett Maher. Well, maybe I do. That would be the height of drama. Brett Maher, a 33-yard field goal <laughs> with two seconds left in the game. Cowboys down two. <laughs> that, that. Or just would the extra point moment. to win it. Maybe to go up 28 <laughs> 27. I mean, it could be just that. I want it to be, yeah. no, I want it to be win or loss, though. It's oh, got to be, be yeah, okay. it's got, it can't just be, it can't just be, we win if I make it and we go to overtime if I miss it. It's got to be, we go home if I miss it, we go on if I make it. That's what it's got to be. Yeah. Um, but uh, Speaking of going home. It's, it's, uh, I, I, it, it is scary. They got playmakers. We know that. They got an offensive line. That you feel like, okay, wait, the the 49ers aren't going to just overmatch the Dallas Cowboy offensive line. Uh, we know it's going to be a, a tough task, but this Cowboy offensive line is still very good. We know that as well. They got some creativity on defense, and they got a guy, in Dan Quinn, who was the head coach while Kyle Shanahan was the offensive coordinator for the Falcons for two years. So he's had a firsthand look a little bit on like some of the rules and things Shanahan likes to do within his offense. He'll have a little feel for, for, uh, for that. So that's where it is. It is interesting. Definitely. And, uh, uh, that's where I'm. I'm excited for it too. Like you said, there's some, you know, the old school history, some nostalgia in this one. Let alone, we got a lot of big time, talented difference makers on the football field. That's going to lead, I think, to a really exciting game. And I was trying to think of the best spot to make this point. I'm going to make it now. You mentioned Dan Quinn crossing paths with the guy who used to work for him in Atlanta, Kyle Shanahan. Adds some intrigue. Gives. Dan Quinn all the more reason to spend every waking moment focused on nothing but getting ready to come up with a defense that can get a step ahead of Kyle Shannon. But that's not happening. There's nothing. Right? I, that's my point. Yeah. There's nothing else that Dan Quinn should be doing this week other than working, sleeping, showering, eating, and I won't say the other word. That we got it. For the next, but you. that's all he should be doing. That's it. Nothing else this week. Laser focus, full obsession, work, eat, sleep, work, eat, sleep, and not much eat and not much sleep. Work, work, work. All work and no play makes Dan Quinn a successful defensive coordinator of the Dallas Cowboys. But no, because of the NFLs, I don't know what the word is, but I'm, I don't know. I, I, Bad. Let's just go with bad. Let's go next level and keep it simple. Bad procedures for 
filling out coaching positions. What, what are you going to have this week? Dan Quinn interviewing for a job at the Broncos. You're going to have D'Amico Ryans interviewing for a head coaching job. It shouldn't happen. I, I'm with Peter King a thousand percent on this. Now, I resisted it when he first made the argument because I thought it's not practical to delay in-person interviews until after the Super Bowl. It's not practical. There's too much stuff that goes on right away with the scouting combine. And hell, you've got the senior bowl before the Super Bowl. You got to have a coaching staff in place. Well, hey, if they if they want to convince these owners to not fire coaches, this would be a way to do it. You can't talk to anyone who's currently working for another team until after the Super Bowl because I don't care what anyone says. Dan Quinn will not give, will not be able to give his full attention, focus, and effort to his job this week. D'Amico Ryans will not be able to give his full attention and focus and effort to his job this week. Kellen Moore, if he's got an interview somewhere, and I've seen his name bubble up, he would not give his full attention, focus, and effort to his job this week because his ship is coming in. While he's still finishing up his, his duties on land, his ship has come in. And what do you do? And, and the, the best explanation that, that I've ever heard on this, and I think it, you mentioned Playmakers, it's in my book, Playmakers, the idea that when you come home from work, as you're getting ready for this playoff game, the first question from Mrs. Assistant Head Coach isn't, how are the preparations going for this key game this weekend? The question is, have you heard anything about that job that you're up for that would result in a dramatic change in our lives? We'd have to move. Your ship would come in. You'd be a head coach. Have you heard anything about that? Right. Your income will go up tenfold. Have you heard anything about that? You can't even have that on your radar screen this week. It should be focus only on the job. And that's what's unfortunate. Because we may not see the level of next level coaching divisional round that we saw wild card round. Because wild card thing. round, these guys were off limits. Well, that that that's the point where I think that I, I would I would I don't know what the solution is. I would, I would love to see them come up with some sort of solution somewhat along the lines of what you're talking about and Peter King are talking about. Because yeah, uh, we we, we want to see these teams at their absolute best. That's where I would think the NFL might want to flirt with changing this rule a little bit. Yeah, I, again, I mean, we, we've had this discussion. I know the majority of the game plans are done, you know, by the time Friday interviews come around. But, damn, I've been a part of a lot of games with some different coaches where Friday and Saturday, hey, coach blah, blah, blah was sitting around you know, hey, let's watch this back one more time. And they came up with a few more ideas or, you know, just figured out a few little details that maybe made sense and tinkered with the game plan that, that can put you over the top. But I, I'm with you, let alone, you know, to your point too, like there's no way in like a D'Amico Ryan or a Dan Quinn is not taking a time a little at the maybe the end of the day on Tuesday and the end of the day on Wednesday that – is going to be like, okay, wait, let me get organized for my interview on Friday and make sure, you know, I got all my ducks in a row here. Uh, so that that's where it's unfortunate. But but I don't blame those guys, you know. That's it's it's don't it's it's you know don't hate the player, hate the game. It's it's just messed up situation and setup where you know they're put in a position of you know being put in a very tough position and, and hard to give your best effort with the way it's set up. Reminds me of what Mickey said to Rocky for a 45 minute fight. You got to train for 45,000 minutes. Th there is no limit to the amount of time that a coach can spend studying film, his own film, his opponent's film, other film, looking for ideas. It's an endless amount of time that you can spend and should spend because you never know that one extra thing you look at may be the thing that Flickers an idea. Oh, I got some. Oh, oh, I got something. Oh, I'm glad I. I oh, I'm glad I looked at that. I got something now. Oh, oh, and it's good. Oh, it's gonna work. I know. I know exactly when to use it. And maybe it won't line up the right way, but boy, if it does. See, that's people call it luck. That ain't luck. That's having your stuff together in a way where it is so buttoned up. You've got a plan for every possible permutation, and you bend luck your way. And tough luck, Cowboys. Tough luck, 49ers. Your defensive coordinators are distracted this week. And they'll say they're not because what else are they going to say? They are. You're not getting your full benefit from them because of the rules the NFL has in place for interviewing head coaches. And maybe those rules should finally change to put everything on hold until after the Super Bowl. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.